If you're not living out in the country, you might think you're safe from creepy venomous spiders. But think again. What if I told you that in cities across the US, there's a peculiar little spider building tangly webs in forgotten corners that has a really toxic secret? The venomous brown widow spider is doing a silent takeover, and I'm going to investigate. Well, this is some peculiar habitat we're in today. Uh, peculiar meaning it really isn't habitat at all. But, um,. If, uh, if Mikey here is correct, there should be some really cool spiders hanging out somewhere around here. In Southeast Florida, you can't enter a highly developed area without seeing invasive reptiles and invertebrates. And this brown widow spider is no exception. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and in my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world, I've tracked down many of the deadliest widow spiders in North America, but one species has evaded my grasp for years. The brown widow, an invasive species with a venom even more toxic than that of the black widow. I'm joined by my friend, Mikey Green, a fellow wildlife educator and insect researcher who has seen these brown widows on his college campus. And as unlikely a place as this seems to search for wildlife, invasive species are around every corner. Lizards of all different sizes take up residence in the vegetation unhindered by predators, and on the walls lurk specialized invertebrates that have adapted to human dwellings, including our first invasive spiders. There's a really big female up there and uh, Mikey is gonna attempt to climb the pillar and get it. <laughs> this I have to see. It's a legendary catch, what the heck? There's also a male that's a bit within reach. Now I'm not as talented of a climber as Mikey is, but I am talented in the altitude department. So um, I'm gonna try and coax this male down real quick. And that's the male. These are pantropical jumping spiders. As that name might suggest, they are from very tropical regions of the world and this particular species is not native. Now jumping spiders are some of my favorite spiders because they are so unbelievably cute and incredibly intelligent. Look at the striping on this male here, very contrasting. And you think, well, that's not gonna give him much camouflage, would it? But actually, because he has those drab colors, that would obscure his outline. Even on the wall of a building, he would look like a piece of debris or something. And that basically hides him from all the little insects that are flying around here that he'd be hunting. The males are extremely active hunters. You'll see them all over the walls, on the ceiling, just kind of hunting around. Whereas these females are a lot larger and way less strikingly patterned than the males. And they spend most of their time inside of the nest, inside the webs that they spin all the way up in the ceilings and the corners. And they basically just kind of guard their egg sacs. Uh, they're a lot larger, as you can see, a lot stockier a lot better camouflaged. So they're basically more prepared for that more sedentary lifestyle, which is kind of strange for a jumping spider. Funny thing about these guys too, is you think those stocky little legs are packed with muscle, right? Well, these arthropods do have muscle, but the way they work is a lot different than the way your muscles and my muscles work. Spiders are based on a hydraulic system. So when he does that jump, he's actually forcing hemolymph, which is basically his kind of blood, into those extremities, causing them to extend fast generating force that propels him off of the surface he was sitting on. These guys are absolutely insane little creatures, and even though they're invasive, I absolutely love seeing all kinds of little jumping spiders out in the wild. And uh, hopefully, if these guys are thriving here, that means there's plenty of insects to attract our incredibly venomous target, the brown widow. Just like these jumping spiders, our widow is a non-native species. It's not known whether the brown widow originated in South Africa or South America, but its distribution is nearly worldwide now, outcompeting native widow species in developed areas. And they leave very distinct telltale signs that they're in the area. Incredibly tangled webs, but more specifically, round, spiky egg sacs. Well, they're definitely here. 
you'll see in the webs, but a lot of them will go into these holes in different parts of the architecture and uh, hide. And some of them may have even abandoned these nests. Some of these nests are full of eggs. Now, Mikey has a spot where he's pretty reliably seen a brown widow when he's walking around on campus. There's a science building in the center of the campus that has a brown widow that is not particularly near any holes or crevices that it can escape into, which is our best shot at catching one, especially given what we've seen so far. However, as we're going along, there's a lot of other cool wall-dwelling creatures out, including some really interesting looking spiders. All right, so there's a big spider right here. I actually have no idea what it is because that web is obscuring it and I can't see the patterning. So I'm gonna just kind of chase her out. Oh, that's a big southern house spider. Um, let me Ooh. see if I can chase her down. Okay. You got a tube? Yeah, I got a tube right here. Look at you. You are gnarly looking. I, I Those thick legs, there we go. Boom. Secured. Hey, oh, perfect. Look at that. That's so cool looking. Now this right here is a southern house spider, a spider I've seen many, many times, but have never actually taken the time to film. And they are really bizarre looking. Such peculiar looking animals. I, they, to me, they almost look like little tarantulas. That's not totally wrong. See, tarantulas are in a group called mygalomorphae. They're mygalomorphs, which is a fancy term for primitive spiders. Now this is actually one of the uraniomorphs, the advanced spiders, but it is among the most primitive of the advanced spiders. Even though these guys are more closely related to your typical day-to-day -day spiders than tarantulas, they are part of an extremely ancient lineage, and that is why they look so absolutely bizarre. But these are web builders that you can find living on your house, where it gets the name Southern House Spider. These are fairly synanthropic, which basically means they live alongside humans and use the dwellings that we've built as habitats. It's kind of funny seeing them out in the day, but normally where I'm where I'm from, I'm used to seeing them living in like cracks and only seeing glimpses of them after the cover of dark has fallen. Absolutely strange little spider. But believe it or not, this is native. This is one of the uh, one of the few native things we have seen here today, which is exciting to see. It's exciting to see that something native is still thriving in an environment that has been so overtaken by introduced species of reptile, spider, and even insect. But right there, Southern House Spider. So as we're making our way into the campus, we can kind of hear in the background, they're starting to like run their pesticide spraying. So we got to move quick. So this is the building? Yep. Huh. There's webbing everywhere. It looks mostly orb weaver though. So these widows like to build their webs in corners. As with a lot of Lactrodectus widow spider species, they want to be tucked away, away from light, away from the elements, somewhere they can basically lay their eggs in peace. In a building like this, these walls offer pretty much no cover. So that, that lip along where it meets the ceiling is going to be key. And sure enough, right in the spot where he's seen it dozens of times, there's the web and the widow is like in the web invisible. The problem is it's really out of reach. There aren't really any like trash cans or chairs or benches we can like drag over. So getting it down, I'm gonna have to get creative. As they say, there is more than one way to skin a womp rat. Now, she does have eggs, but this is an invasive species, so I don't want to hear it in the comments. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, I got her where I can see her. Got her. Perfect. Oh, oh. you don't know how good this feels. The last widow spider I've been looking for for a long time. That perfect orange abdomen. That, my friends, is a brown widow. Doesn't get any better than that. I'm gonna do that, take her out real quick and see. So we can get a better look at her. Look at that. These are amazing, incredible spiders. Look at the patterning on this thing. Those weird geometric patterns 
on the back of the abdomen or it gets its scientific name, Latrodectus geometricus. And if you got a hint from that name there, it's, uh, it's named the brown widow is not a joke. These are actually a widow spider, just like Latrodectus mactens, the black widow spider. And what's crazy is here in these urban environments, they actually outcompete native widow species. And we're not sure 100% why, because you only find them in these developed areas, out in the wilderness, you can find black widows under logs, inside hollow trees, but brown widows in their non-native range are actually really hard to get outside of much more developed areas. She's jumping off there. Let's see if she'll cooperate on my hands. Very skittish, and most widow spiders are incredibly skittish. People think of them, oh, they're dangerously venomous, right? But they're actually not that mean, as you can see right here. She's chilling out. It's a shaded area, they don't like the light one bit because they are fairly nocturnal and their eyes are really meant more for just distinguishing light and dark to uh, detect threats. They're not very keen on their vision. You can see she's probing her front legs all around me. That's how she understands her world. They're very tactile animals and in their web, they'll use that tactile ability to help them hunt. You can't see it too well on camera, but I, I can feel it. She is webbing me all up. Now this is not her building a nest, this is her basically just giving herself safety lines for uh, if she were to drop off, and she is very keen to drop off. These are, these are not friendly spiders. You know, I might be asking Spencer, this is a dangerously venomous spider, or, you know, why are you handling it? Well, that's because these spiders are venomous, but at the end of the day, they're not that keen to use it, and a lot of people think about these spiders being horrifically dangerous, but and I could just take one finger and just go and squish her if I wanted to. I don't want to, I think she's really cool. Um, now she is invasive, so we're not gonna be returning her back to the environment because we would like the native species to come back. However, we are much more dangerous to these widow spiders than they are to us. You can see she's webbing me up here. Now Latrodectus web is actually one of the coolest things about these spiders. You know, we, we normally think about their venom and how toxic these animals are, but their web is actually really ridiculously strong. Pound for pound, it's many times stronger than steel. And as a result, we uh, are studying it in the lab because we wanna learn more about its chemical properties because it could be used in a lot of different material sciences in the real world and would help us advance our technology. A spider, a venomous spider most people are afraid of that can surround us all the time has that weird chemical secret inside its web that we're using to advance our technology. How incredible is that? Widow spiders are one of my favorite groups of spiders and an absolutely insane animal to find in the wild, native or not. We're still learning about the biology of this strange spider. And the reality is that for now, invasive or not, we'll have to learn to coexist with it. As such, this spider is coming home with me to North Carolina, where she'll become an educational ambassador for her species and spider kind alike. Now, you might not be too concerned about black widows being displaced, but despite their formidable reputation, they're actually quite misunderstood. I'm sure you've heard some crazy stories about widow spiders, but if you wanna learn how true they really are, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.